Hey guys, what's up? This video we're going to be discussing the magical forever frame. Forever frame is one of the four ways SignalR works. We have web sockets, event source, forever frame, and then long pulling. So forever frame is kind of like the third option in the list, but it's still really cool. So let's kind of dig in and see what it's like. Well, the first thing we need to know about forever frame is it has to do with an HTML iframe. iframe is an HTML element. That means we can embed it in our HTML pages. If you've ever embedded a YouTube video, you have probably used an iframe. It's a way to open a connection to another server. So with the, within this iframe, you're going to put a URL to where the server is listening on. This is kind of complex and you don't really need to understand all the details. I don't even understand all the details, but just this is kind of a rough overview. The iframe is going to have a URL of where the server is listening on. So kind of like making a request over the internet, but now we're doing it within our HTML page in an iframe. And once this connection is made through this iframe, the server is able to run stuff on the client. So if we have a JavaScript function, let's call it announce. Well, on the server, that's our server. It is able to call this function and give it data. So it could announce something on the client by putting data in the announce function and then that function runs. And just for you beginners out there, a function is basically a piece of code that can be ran just by calling its name and passing in some data. So when we say announce parentheses and then we pass in like, welcome to the web page or whatever, and then close it, we are running the announce function which might do all kinds of different things. That is the way forever frame works. Now this video is the first video where we actually talk about the server push, which I've mentioned many times. In this situation, the server can send data to the client without the client requesting it. The only request of the client is the initial request to get the client side code. And that's going to be that way for all of them. That's when you go to HTTP, whatever the website is, and then you get the code and then forever frame starts running. But once it starts running, the server can now send data to the client as it desires. That's cool. That's called a server push. So it's a push from the server. Now, just like anything, forever frame has its downsides. One of the downsides is that when it sends data to the client, it can take up a bunch of RAM by just sitting there in that iframe. One of the ways around this is to program it to clear out the data every so often. Another downside is that the client must support iframes. So how many clients actually support iframes? Well, the only kind I can think of are ones that have web browsers because web browsers can have iframes in HTML that you receive from the server. There may be more out there, but that's the only one I know of. So this is limiting in the clients. Earlier I mentioned how SignalR can work with all different kinds of clients. So if for any reason the client does not support an iframe, well in that situation, it's not going to choose forever frame. This is a good reason why you should use SignalR because you don't have to worry about whether the client has support for iframes or not. You don't have to worry about putting the iframe in your HTML. It's gonna do all of that goodness for you. If you were just using Forever Frame alone, you would be limiting yourself to just web browsers or anything else that supports iframes. The third downside is that this is a one-way persistent connection. What this means is that anytime the client wants to request data or it wants to send data to the server, it's going to have to make a new request. It's not gonna be able to send it through the iframe in like that tunnel I drew earlier when I was talking about persistent connections, it's going to have to make a new request which requires more resources from the server. But this is great for pushes. So if your uh, application primarily uses pushes, like pushing data from the server to the client, then this might be something that would work. Good thing we don't even have to worry about that, but I'm just saying. 
in some kind of application such as a chat room, this would not be the best option because anytime you submit a message, that's going to have to be sent to the server in a separate request. Well, that is Forever Frame. Thanks guys and I'll see you in the next video.